Hey, Bozu Band members of District 3 here. Hey, this is Monty Franck with Tribal Emergency Management. And typically, we are in the Pine Grove schools doing our annual fire prevention and safety day. But being that this is the, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we can't do that. So this year, we are doing a virtual uh, safety day for all our, all our families and, and our kids. So today, we're at Hinkley doing with our EMS brothers and sisters. And they will introduce themselves here to show us what they will do and, what, and how they serve both the Hinkley community and Lakeley in the community. Hi, my name is Adam Gray. I'm the ambulance supervisor here at uh, Essential Health EMS. Um, I'm also here with Dean O'Brien and Dan Bergen, uh, two EMTs with their service. We'll do some demonstrations here shortly. I want to tell you just a little bit about um, our ambulance service. Uh, Essential Health EMS covers the better part of Pine County, which would include uh, the tribal areas in, uh, in Pine County as well. Uh, we run approximately 3,500 calls per year um, in the in our area, uh, both inter-facility transports and 911 requests. Um, we run a, uh, two levels of service. We run ALS, which is Advanced Life Support, and BLS, which is Basic Life Support, and uh, dependent on dependent on the crew that's responding. Um, the key difference between the two is an ALS crew, advanced life support, will be staffed by at least one paramedic. Paramedics are trained to give a variety of medications, uh, advanced airway management. They can start IVs, uh, do some additional skills, specially trained uh, type, type items that uh, are beyond the, the normal first responder level. Uh, we also have uh, EMTs, which also can start IVs. They can give uh, a lesser amount of medications. They can uh, do immediate life-saving interventions. And of course, we all transport uh, to the appropriate facility as needed. So we run three ambulances uh, for most hours of the day. We have a base in Pine City. We have a base in Hinkley, which is where we're at today. And we also have a base out of Sandstone at the hospital. So here we are with Dean O'Brien. He's been with the service for about five years now. Dean, you want to tell a little bit about your job as an EMT? Well, as an EMT, like Adam was saying, we uh, we, we can't do as much as the uh, paramedics do, but we still uh, we, you know, we do the CPR, uh, we do the IVs, uh, we, we do the Narcan, uh, some of the other um, respiratory uh, medications uh, through nebulizing and th things like that. We sa and we save lives. I'm Dan Bergen, an EMT with the Central Ambulance. Hey, Monty here again. People always ask, when I call 911 in Pine County and I request an ambulance, what really happens? We have to realize that when you call 911 from your home, or if you actually have an old-fashioned landline, this dispatcher is going to know what address you're calling from. But if you're like me and you call from a cell phone, it goes to the nearest cell tower, so you are really going to need to tell them your exact address on where you live so that the ambulance, who just introduced themselves to you, know exactly where to go. And when they get there, we're going to talk about next is what do they bring to you when you call 911 for an ambulance service? Okay, as Matthew was talking about, uh, once you call 911, the 911 dispatcher is going to dispatch the appropriate resources. And depending on what your emergency is, they may dispatch a fireman, a police officer, or an ambulance. Sometimes all three, depending on what type of emergency uh, you're faced with. So when we show up, we're normally going to show up with two people, an EMT and a paramedic, or two EMTs. And uh, we can give you a little bit of a tour of what, what you'd expect to see in the back of an ambulance. So come on on. First thing you see in the back of an ambulance is, of course, going to be the stretcher. Um, this is where you would ride as a patient most of the time if you were have to, uh, if we were to treat you uh, for an emergency. One of the key pieces of the equipment that we carry on every call is going to be what we call our first in bag. The first in bag has all the immediate uh, life-saving tools that we would have to treat uh, just about any emergency for the initial phases. We also have splinting material. This is a, called a SAM splint. So right now it's floppy. It doesn't seem like it would make a very good splint. But what we can do, now it becomes a rigid splint. So if Dean here had a broken arm, we could splint it right in place. There, there you go, quick as that. That's how we would place a splint. 
Okay. Yeah, some other things we have in here. We have just a few medications. In this box here, this is where we keep our uh, medications for things like heart attacks. We have nitro, uh, aspirin. We have some additional medications for nausea. We have some additional medications for nausea. And of course the syringes to be able to administer those medications. So here we are in the back of the ambulance. Also on our stretcher we have an oxygen tank for uh, patients that are having trouble breathing or not breathing not breathing well. We'll give them some extra oxygen and that will help uh, help stabilize them until we can get to the hospital. This item here is called a <coughs> Uh, transport ventilator. It's essentially a breathing machine that will breathe for a patient through a breathing tube that we place in the patient's trachea. Okay, let me show you what a breathing tube looks like. This would be our advanced airway kit. A breathing tube is called an endotracheal tube. And this tube would be placed in through a patient's mouth or nose down into their trachea where um, we would breathe for them yeah, with this machine here for a patient that is not able to breathe for themselves. So also in our, what's called our ALS kit, advanced life support kit, we have uh, quite a few other medications. We have our full range of uh, advanced life support medications. These would be for patients whose heart might have stopped beating or um, if your heart is not functioning properly. This would be, say, somebody was choking uh, or someone is having trouble breathing. We could suction their airway to remove any um, any items that are blocking their airway from breathing. This machine here is called a Lucas device. The Lucas device does CPR for us so that we can focus on providing care to the patient. All right, so say a person's heart stopped beating then we can apply Lucas device onto this patient. And there we go. And this machine will continue to do CPR for about 30 minutes while we're doing other things, managing the airway, starting IVs, giving medications. So the last item I wanna show you inside the ambulance is our cardiac monitor. This uh, is one of the key pieces of the equipment we use on just about every call. And what the cardiac monitor does, it gives us a lot of information about how, um, how stable the patient is as far as uh, are they breathing properly? Is their pulse speeding at the right, uh, the right speed? Um, what is their oxygen level? If we want to, if we have a really sick patient and we want to send this information for a doctor to look at in the emergency room, with the press of the button, we can send this information to the doctor, and a doctor can help us make uh, decisions on, on care and transport that we're going to do for this patient. And we have our patient Monty here today, and uh, we have him on the stretcher where we would uh, transport our patients. Um, when we get him on there, we've got lots of safety belts. You feel secure, Monty? Yes, I do. I'm not hurt. And, uh, nowadays, we have uh, fancy automatic stretchers. We don't have to do as much lifting as we used to. Then it loads right into the ambulance and uh, locks into the floor. And we can get our patient safely to the hospital. Yes, and going to the hospital. Safely. Now, the items we keep on the outside, we mainly use for extricating people. Extricating means uh, removing a patient from a car during a car accident, maybe uh, an upstairs bedroom, maybe even uh, moving a patient through the woods if they were an injured hiker or something like that. A couple different types of backboards. This is called a scoop stretcher. How are you doing, Rescue Annie? We're gonna lift you up, you're gonna feel like you're floating. Now we're ready to go. This is uh, one of my favorite pieces of equipment. This is called a stair chair. The stair chair helps us, it's like a wheelchair that can go up and down a set of stairs. And this will help us move our patient to the ambulance where we load them onto the cot and transport them to the hospital.
All right, here we are. This is the cab of the ambulance. Um, it's basically a big van truck with a couple modifications. We have modica modification for a siren right here. Uh, we have modifications for the light switches for all the emergency lights. And those are all controlled up here. Um, and then underneath our computer mount here, this is where our radio is. With this radio, this is called an 800 megahertz radio, and we can talk to um, other ambulances. We can talk to the sheriff's deputies. We can talk to tribal police. Uh, we can talk to other first responders and other fire departments. All on this, all from this one radio. Each truck is outfitted with a with an iPhone. We use this for giving reports to the hospital. We also use it to look up information on our care guidelines. And then every ambulance also has an iPad. We use our iPad for documenting what we do to the patient for treatment. Um, we can also look up uh, any reference information that we might need um, if we have questions about um, medication dosages and whatnot. So that's the inside of the ambulance. So as you can see, all our community members who live in Hinkley and or in Lake Lena, that the Mille Lacs Band and Essentia Ambulance really work well and hand in hand. We always prepare each other, we always share training information, we always are good neighbors. So you can see everything that they do and the equipment that they have benefits all residents of Pine County, not only for the Mille Lacs Band, but also our neighbors 